Anybody? You already got one. Right. Uh, why don't we knock that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Um, thank you all for coming once again. Uh, my name is Jerry Nesselrode. I'm the president of the uh, Navy Point Neighborhood Watch. Um, I'm a uh, person that is a stickler for time. It's just one minute after six o'clock, so we're starting at six, and uh, we are going to end at seven. If there's more discussion points at seven o'clock, we're going to move out into the parking lot so these two fine gentlemen can close up the building, and if you want to continue discussion out in the parking lot, uh, you can do that. I will be leaving, okay, at <laughs> seven o'clock. And we can, if we have more discussion points, we can table that for the next meeting uh, in January. Uh, I see a couple of new faces, uh, mostly familiar faces. Um, uh, it is my goal as what I call the new president of uh, Neighborhood Watch, this is my second meeting now, is to uh, grow, our group. Uh, I'm a big advocate for Neighborhood Watch. I've seen the, the good that it's done in my previous life in California, um, and I think it can do a lot of good here in Navy Point as well. So I'm a big advocate for it. Um, I understand there are uh, some things, complications with Neighborhood Watch, uh, where we rent a skew and get out of um, our mission. Um, and it's my job as a president to stay focused on what Neighborhood Watch is. And in a short description, for me, it's crime prevention. Crime prevention. And I, in layman's terms, I like to use it as a little bit extra eyes and ears for the Sheriff's Department. Okay? I am not the Sheriff. I am not a sworn deputy. Okay? I am a president of Neighborhood Watch, which means I have no special privileges other than the citizens and the residents of Neighborhood Watch. Uh, I will advocate once again, if you see something, you do not call me or Tina or anybody else, you call the Sheriff's Department, okay? Um, and I just am a strong believer in that. So please don't call me, okay, um, about that. And plus, if you guys see something, I mean, we gotta notify the Sheriff's anyway. And we want to notify them as fast as we can to get them to the scene, especially in high emergency situations. Okay? Um, but please don't call me and say, hey, this person's lawn is too long, the grass is too long, or, you know, I don't know about the code going on at this, my neighbor's house. That's not my job. And um, call code then if you have issues with that. Okay? Um, yes, I can help you get phone numbers for you to call, okay? But that's, that's not something I'm gonna be doing. All right, um, the phone number you need to call is the number at the top of your agenda, okay? And I've said it in the last meeting and I wanna emphasize it again in this meeting, okay? That phone number is the number that gets you, I believe, David, gets you to this building, the dispatcher in this building. The main uh, dispatcher at uh, Leonard Street. On Leonard Street. Which is better, I know 911 is so easy to remember, and that's what I remember. But if you call that number, it's going to get a little bit quick, potentially a little bit quicker response time. And we all know in active shooter situations and high emergency situations, response time is so critical. So if you could just get in the habit of calling that number rather than 911, could potentially save lives, multiple lives, okay? So take this agenda, tape it on your fridge like I have, highlight that phone number, and that should be your 911 number. Of course, if you're in the neighborhood, you can't, you don't have this number, call 911, all right? But I advocate for just knowing and memorizing what that phone number is. And the last four digits are 9620, prefix 436, 850, here we go. Okay, so enough about that. Um, so there's our agenda. Uh, we meet the first Monday of every month. Okay, so today is Monday, the first Monday, December 4th. We meet for one hour, starting at 6 p.m. and we finish at 7 p.m. Okay, um, so for your calendars, if you're like, wow, this is, this is something I wanna be a part of, for, you could plan on it for January. I might as well say right now. The first Monday in January is January 1st. We will not be meeting on January 1st. I will be having fun watching college football. So our meeting in January will be January 8th. 
6 o'clock, January 8th, that Monday, so the second Monday in January. Hopefully this building will be okay for us to utilize. It is. Okay. All right, so plan on that. If there's no holiday stuff like that going on, it's almost always the first Monday of every month. Okay? Um, and it's at this location. This is 20 North Navy Boulevard, and I would like to strongly advocate for you to invite your neighbors. I would like to grow this. I really would for Navy Point. Residents outside of Navy Point are welcome to come, okay? I go to the beach, da uh, Bayou Davenport neighborhood watch meetings. Um, hey, welcome guys, come on in. Uh, grab a seat anywhere. Um, there's agendas here too, guys, if you want one. Um, I advocate, I go to the Bayou Davenport neighborhood watch meetings and the uh, um, Beach Haven uh, neighborhood watch meetings and uh, others, but I feel like those two neighborhoods are kind of our surrounding neighborhoods, so I like to stay in touch with them. I'm in good communication with the president of Bayou Davenport, uh, Ms. Gibbons. I think she runs a really good program over there. Um, so. Uh, a lot of the issues facing our neighborhood are the same ones facing surrounding neighborhoods. So I feel like if we could join a coalition somewhat and work together with our sheriff's department, we can do even more good for our communities. Okay, so homelessness, um, pets being dumped, problems like that, um, <coughs> trash removal, uh, whatever. These are issues facing all of our neighborhoods. So um, I just encourage Navy Point residents here at this meeting for the hour, we're gonna talk about Navy Point, but, um, and you can go to those other meetings if you want, and they're all on the Sheriff's website, and I can give you that um, if you guys like after the meeting as well. Okay, um, I'm the president. Right now we do not have a vice president, if anybody's interested, it's a vacant <coughs> position. I would love to have somebody as vice president to help us. Um, I live on the north side or the bayou side of Mary Point, and I think we have a lot of more issues on the south side. But I'd love to see a vice president who resides on the south side of Navy Point so we can kind of cover the whole neighborhood step forward. So if you're interested in that, we could go through the proper procedure of electing somebody and nominating somebody and voting on it and try and get someone else to help us out. Uh, this lovely lady to my right is Tina Tillery. She is our secretary. Uh, she does all the notes for the meeting and she's the one that uh, puts out the emails of notification for us and uh, takes the notes as she's doing now and then in about uh, three to five days or so, she will send out an email, the notes of what we talked about tonight. So you guys will have a follow-up uh, written transcript of what is discussed tonight, okay? If you want to be put on the email list before we leave tonight, you can do it right now if you'd like. Just walk right up here. Um, give Tina your email so you can get the notifications. She sends it out about three days ahead of time before the meeting um, and gives you kind of a little, remember, we're meeting on Monday night type of thing. I know I always need those. Well, not for this meeting, but for other meetings. Um, so please do that, okay? All right, uh, getting into our agenda. Um, again, welcome. Um, I just wanted to, I started looking up some things and I gave David a call this afternoon and I listed something called procedures for our meetings, okay? I've just kind of, I've been involved with Neighborhood Watch off and on here in Navy Point for about a year and a half. And in my opinion, um, the flow was, for the most part, pretty good. Um, but sometimes things seem to get off track a little bit. And what I would like to do is informally constitutes just some general ground rules that I think we all know, but I would like to reemphasize. I definitely <coughs> want to give everybody a chance to talk, okay? But out of respect, if you have something to say on a point, if you could just notify me instead of just blurting out in a loud way, okay? And I will acknowledge you, if somebody's already talking and somebody raises their hand, I will probably just point and I'll say something along the lines as she's talking, you're gonna be next type of business. You guys all know this, we're all grown adults. I just wanna make sure we kinda of have a good, constructive, productive meeting, okay? If we don't get around to everybody, okay, um, we'll do the best we can. If you do wanna address something, 
let's be respectful of everybody's time. My opinion, this is generally speaking, if you're going past two minutes and making a point, in my opinion, and these are Jerry Nesserud's words, you're starting to dominate the meeting and the meeting starts becoming about an issue, not about everything for us. Generally speaking, I'm not gonna sit here with a stopwatch and say your two minutes are up. I'm not gonna do that. But I may, if you go past the two minutes, I may kind of go something like that, just to give, it's respect, right? We're all respecting each other, okay? Um, so those are just kind of general ground rules um, as we move forward. And I definitely want your all the input as, as to what makes our neighborhood safer. That's what it's all about, crime prevention. Crime prevention, that's what I'm interested in, okay? All right, uh, so general procedures for our meetings, and those, those can change. We could, we could use the Roberts rules. We can hard track that if we want to in the future, but let's not go so hard into it. It's December, it's holiday season, so when we get into January and February, we really start rolling with this. Uh, maybe we'll kind of take a stronger track with that. Uh, with that said, I try and stick tight to time, so I've got 6.12 on my clock. Uh, we do have a guest speaker for tonight, okay? Uh, in our last meeting, we talked about um, ECUA and trash removal, okay? So I'm trying to do, Tina and I, we're trying to do our due diligence and address your concerns. So we did make contact um, with the help of one of our residents um, that we have a member uh, 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 from ECUA to discuss and answer any questions for us, okay? Um, and so if there's no other just quick questions, real quick fire um, questions of operational, I'd like to invite, uh, make sure I say it right, uh, Gary Dean, is that right? I'd like to invite Gary Dean, he's a manager of Bolt Waste from ECUA to just kind of come up front if you could, Gary. And if you'd like to give a short little thing um, about our bulk waste, and then I think we're going to have some questions for you. Uh, how to, and we are we are going into holiday season, so I know we're going to get a lot of new stuff. Yeah. Which means we're going to want to get January get rid of stuff. That's good. Okay. Thanks for coming tonight. Good no problem. No problem. Uh, All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Jerry. Uh, start off like this. Here's the number you need to know: eight five zero three five six. 0438 that is my personal ECUA cell phone. Can you say that one more time? 850 If you if you call me and I do not answer, I'm not ignoring you. I could be in a meeting. Leave me a name and a number and I will return your phone call. Now that's the 911 number you need to know from me. <laughs> I've been at ECUA over 30 years. I've been the manager for over, now probably right at 10 years. Ain't too much that happened in this, at ECUA I don't know about. In January and July of this year, we changed our boat waste program. Before that, we were running around the entire county and picking up everything that was on the street. Didn't have to call, just picked it up. The reason why we wanted to change that is because we were picking up stuff at Miss Benson's house. Miss Benson would get home and say, I didn't want that to go. She called and we had to replace it. We had to replace it, and I'm not joking. We replaced more grills. In let, me, let me back in one second. I was retired and I came back to work for I've been back in the management position since August of last year. Since August of last year up until July, I bet you we replaced at least 25 grills that were sitting out on the street. Legs off them, holes in them, they didn't want them to go. Basketball goals with no rim on them, laying on the side of the road. Kids were still shooting basketball in them. Kids' little uh, carts, no wheels on them, they were still driving. We spent too much money replacing stuff that people said they didn't want to go. A lady put a couch out there that we guarantee had been out there for at least three months. She said the movers had just left it. That couch cost us over $1,300. We had to replace it. So we went to Bulk Waste TV. Now everybody has to call. A lot of people didn't like it. 
but it helps us because we were losing and wasting gas, money, energy, and time to run around every street. We had to go up and down every street and every area every day to find stuff. And a lot of stuff that people didn't want. So we changed the boat waste program. Not everybody has to call. When you call in for boat waste pickup, I need you to be very, very specific of what you're putting out there. If you tell us we're picking up a couch and we get there as a couch, a table, at a TV, we are picking up the couch. That's all we're picking up. It's just a phone call, it's an easy thing to do, and it works. Now, Christmas time is always a headache for both ways. We will be running additional trucks the week after Christmas, the week after New Year, trying to collect everything that people, because it's going to get a lot of phone calls, we know that. We're going we're gonna to be ready. But I encourage you to encourage your neighbors and everyone. Please, ma'am, please, sir, just call us. We, we can't get too many ticks that we can't get them picked up. We, we can accommodate. But I need you to call and let us know. My job is to keep your neighborhood as clean as possible. That's my job. That's what I, that's what I want to do. But I need your help. I'm like my man now. I can't do nothing because they're not rolling their cans in. That's not my issue. <laughs> Call code enforcement. My job is to make sure your garbage, yard waste, recycle, and bulk is picked up, I believe, on Wednesdays. It's y'all every Wednesday. Yeah. That's my job. If I'm failing, that's, that's the 911 number to call right there. Let me know. Let me know. You can't get on my nerves. You can't bother me. You can't. You're not going to make me mad. I'm not going to cuss at you, I promise. It won't happen with me. I'm going to do what I can to keep you as happy as possible. Because my thing, when I got a happy customer, I got happy drivers. When I got happy drivers, they got happy manager. All right? A little quick spill. Like I said, he told me I got 15 minutes. And trust me, I'm the one about time too. At 6.30, I plan on sitting down. Now, I done took up about four minutes. Any questions? Yes, sir. Can I call you at the cell number about a my neighbor's trash that's been there for more than two or three? Obviously, looks like a rotted sofa or barbecue or something. And I call you and say, I live at one one hundred three Northwest. Mm -hmm. At one hundred seven Northwest, it's been sitting there for about a month now. Can you come pick this up? No, sir. No, sir. The reason being is the homeowner has to make the phone call because they're going to want to know their account number and who's responsible. I know that sounds kind of, but that's just the way it has to be. I know it's, a, it's, a, it's an eyesore. Now, will I, and Ms. Benson can attest to this, will I go above and above or beyond to try to get it removed? Yes, I will. If I come out there and I notice that the house is empty, and ain't nobody in it, 99.9% of the time, I'm going to have my truck when they come out there just pick it up. But I'm not going to clean up a whole neighborhood. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If it's somebody living there, I was intending, I, I thought I had them, and I'm a, I'll get with you. I got these cards you can just, just stick on the window, stick on the door, and just let them know, hey, call this number. We, it's free. It's a free service. We'll come pick it up. But you got to call. i get with you. I'll make sure I bring you a box of those cards, and it's just hand them out. It ain't hard, it's, it's easy, it's, it's easy, yes sir. Um, so we have some county owned, a lot of county owned property in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just pick the boat ramp. Okay. And I see that there's been trash at the boat ramp near the porta potty, and mm -hmm. it's been there for over two weeks. Do I call your cell phone number? Yes. On situation like that, I would much rather you call that because that does not have a physical address. I can get it taken care of as long as it ain't, as long as it don't become a reoccurring issue. You know what I mean? Like every month, somebody is leaving couches there or stuff of that nature. And yeah, I can I can help you with that. Yeah, just call me. Okay. Yeah, and I would rather be just one person that do that. I don't need everybody in the neighborhood calling me about every, you know. So Jerry, in that case, would you be all right with a 
one someone in a different neighborhood calling you to be the contact? It's actually parks. <laughs> that belongs to parks. Parks, parks could contact I you. Think, yes. And I'll say the way this is my my question. If it's construction material that they have to pay for, is that still you? That's customer service. But is it your your people? Yes. Uh, yes. I'll yes. talk to you after me. Yeah. Any type of debris that you need removed, even if on your boat ways, you need to call customer service. Don't call me. Issues with houses that does not conform, you can call me and I'll see what I can do to help you. I can't promise you a whole bunch because it's on the homeowner. Construction debris, piles of limbs that's too large for our trucks to pick up, which is a six by six by six pile. Six by six by six. Yeah, anything larger than that that they won't remove would have to be an extra sanitation pickup and it's a charge for that. It's 49.53 for the first two yards and it goes up from that on up. I think that's important for us to know, guys. Six by six by six. Yeah. So if it's longer, taller, wider than that, they ain't picking it up. So, um, and Bell, I'm going to get to you, but real quick to answer your question, I would prefer Tom and all of you. You call. Them. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm the president of the neighbor. I set these meetings up, so I would prefer you call. Yeah, I know you me. want one person, yeah. but he gave us his number, so yeah. I'm going to use it. I'll even give you my work email if you want that. You can have my work. You can email me. It doesn't matter. I'll yes. give it. I'll make sure we put that on the board before I leave. Let's just. Go. <coughs> Let's okay. Go ahead and do that. Or, go ahead. Yeah, before. Well, what, you want to come around and write it up here? Gary. Dot Dean. Gary. Dot Dean at ECUA.FL.gov. Thank you. That's it. That's my email. You can email me. I will respond. But when you email me, here's the one thing that I, 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 I have an issue with. When you email me about an address and you don't give me the address, mm. <laughs> I need to know what's just, hey, my neighbor didn't do this good. I need to know the neighbor's address. I mean, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. People email me all the time and they want me to do something, but they don't give me an a address to do it at. I'll help you any kind of way I possibly can, but I need an address to go look at what I'm doing. Yes, ma'am. First, I want to thank ECUA staff because I don't, there's nobody nicer out in the field than people who work full time for ECUA. Thank I mean, seriously. Thank just really beautiful people. And over the years, the only time I ever get in a catch 22 was when it called in. And I'm assuming, and Lois, I'm sorry I didn't recognize you when I walked in. I, I didn't have these on these days. Um, is when I think sometimes there may be some contracted, you know, help that maybe they are not completely up on everything. So I know this is not the way you guys are doing it, and this is some time past. So let me tell you the answer that I got on the bulk waste pickup the last time I just called in. Okay. I didn't call Dean. I didn't text Lois. I didn't call your cell. I just called customer service, trying not to be a fan, but I'm like, hey, I've got a bunch of bulk waste. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't actually, it was just <coughs> particular items. You guys had done amazing on some yard waste because, you know, six by six by six, that's actually a lot of yard waste. And I piled it up and, and you know, the woman's like, that's too much. And I'm like, no, go look on the website. And then one city CUA person looked at it, they're like, yeah, that's, you know, you did it right. And you guys came out and you're like, bam, on the yard waste. But on a couple of bulk items I have for garbage, I had someone on the phone, again, this was months and months ago, mm -hmm. six, eight months ago, mm -hmm. tell me that I had to call on Monday morning. I had to call early because I needed to get on, oh, on the list because there were only so many spots on the list and there were like 20 spots. And once they were gone, they were gone and you couldn't wait list. You had to call back on a Monday. And that those 20 people would get a manager by your house on Wednesday to um, assess what you have and call a quote in so that then the people the next week knew what trucks to send out in order to get your stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when I was quoted the price, and honestly, I can't remember the price, I'm like way higher than the tipping fee. So Kevin and I threw it in the trailer to, to the dump. I know that's not how you guys are doing it, 
you, you, I mean, you can't be doing it that way now because that is like, is, is that it? Did I, That's is it all close? Like, what exactly is it that, that people, I mean, okay, the people in, in this room have your cell phone number. Mm -hmm. When you're calling customer service, though, what, what is the answer that you're getting for how to get your, your bulk waste? Bulk waste, is, bulk waste is what is considered the same as the yard trash. If it's a six by six by six. Generally, you can probably get two couches, three or four mattresses. That's a perfect six by six by. Same thing as for the, for the yard trash. For the yard trash. What you're explaining is our extra sanitation pickup. That's a paid pickup for somebody that has stuff larger than that. And we take the first, now we take the first 40 calls on a Monday. And the reason we do that, because we can only pick those up on a Monday. Stretching it a little bit, we went to 40 because we felt we could do a little bit more. But sometimes them 40 could be eight to nine truckloads. So we got to keep it at a minimum so we can finish up that on a Monday. If you fit in that cubic space, though, you can put it out by the road, and that's just a standard pick. That's you a standard. No. Well, on the bulk ways, yes, you do. Bulk ways. See, I don't want you to get bulk ways and extra sanitation com confused. Okay. That's two different things. Bulk ways is what, like I said, a couch, washer, dryer, refrigerator. Stuff that does not fit in your green can. Uh, bags of clothes is not bulk waste. It'll fit in your can. An area rule is bulk waste. Recarpeting your house is not bulk waste. That's an extra sanitation. Anything that's larger than your six by six that you won't go, in, that's an extra sanitation. Okay, so bulk waste is six by six if you do have to call. Yes, ma'am. But it's free. It's free. And, and then anything, you just need to call before your pickup date, not on Monday. Okay, and anything beyond that is extra sanitation, yes, and that's when it comes at an extra cost. Exactly. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, is there a weight limit of that six by six by six? For the bulk? Yeah. No. No. Not necessarily. It breaks. But bricks is not bricks will be considered an extra sanitation okay. because it did not come out of the home. Bulk waste is just items that come out of your home. Cabinets, refrigerator, stove, washer, dryer, Got it. Uh, furniture. Okay. Yeah. Okay. White goods, so to speak. Um, and then also, I'm a. I used to work for Amazon and mm -hmm. deliver packages. I'm a big fan of taking pictures of where I leave the package. Yeah. Um, if I want to uh, uh, have you remove my barbecue. Mm -hmm. And I give you my address, which is important. Give the address, and then um, say barbecue. Mm -hmm. But the barbecue is all rusted, and worn out. I take a picture of it. Can I send it to your cell phone? And you have a picture of what I want by? Well, no, I wouldn't recommend that because when, like I said, when you're making a bulk waste pickup call, you're not calling me. Okay. You call it customer service. Okay. Just tell them you got a barbecue grill out there. That's there. No. All right. That's it. Simple as that. It, I mean, when I tell you bulk waste is simple. It's just a matter of calling and say, I'm gonna have uh, some stro three baby strollers, a baby bed, and a baby mattress. That's what they are gonna put on the work order. When my driver rents that, he's gonna look at that work order. Everything on that work order is there on the side of the street. He picks it up and go on to his next ticket. Very well. All right. Any other questions? You got about one minute. <laughs> yes, ma'am. One minute, and maybe not your department, but is your recycling facility open, or is it reopening? Yeah, it's already reopened. It's reopened. Yeah, that's how, at the land, it's called the Merck. That's our recycling center. It is open in the back room. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, trying to think if there was something that popped in my head, but it, uh, If it does, email me. <laughs> email me. I'm not telling anybody, don't bother Miss Benson, but you can get, you can, you can eliminate Miss Benson and come straight to me. I don't mind. If you want to use Miss Benson, that's fine. Miss Benson conversate at least once a week. Anything? Yes, sir. Since you've opened to us this, you might tell customer service. I, I bugged Lois a couple times when I would really rather have talked to you. Customer service doesn't want to let me know who you are and how to get a hold of you. Now that I know that, I've got you in my phone because <laughs> I. Did you know Nettie Williams? Yes. Okay. We she's, the, she's the only one that can handle me. 
Okay. <laughs> so that's the preferred method, you know, is to go to the, the horse. I'll tell everybody this. When you try a customer serving and it fails, call me. Okay. If I don't get back to you right then, it ain't Doc again. I'm not ignoring anybody. I could be in a meeting or anything going on at that time. I will call you back. Yeah. I will call you back. My concern is that I want your neighborhood to look just like my neighborhood. And I want my neighborhood to be clean. I want your neighborhood to be clean as well. But please be mindful. I got rules and guidelines that I have to adhere by. I cannot break the rules. A little bit. <laughs> but I can't break it. All right? Anybody else? Thank you all for having me. I was just going to reiterate, because I'm a big fan of, I need repetition in my life. So you need the address. Yes. And you need a description. Yes. What needs to be picked up as accurately as we can. As accurately as you can. Anything else I'm leaving out? No, sir. That's about it right there. And again, I don't mind working with you all with anything that's a problem in your neighborhood, a vacant lot, yeah. where somebody turned it into a dump. Just call them. Call me and I might say, hey, Jerry, can you meet me right now? Yeah. Just meet me right now. We'll do what we can to get it banged up. All right? Oh, and weirdly, the address for the boat ramp is to Grieve Court. The entire park is to Grieve Court. And because the, where the boat ramp is is to Grieve, just FYI. Okay. Yeah, right. we get that address and it's a weird one. Yeah, that's it. Because it's the boat ramp. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Great. Uh, another? Yes. My name is Lois Benson and I, I represent this area. Yes. Um, Gary does a fantastic job, and he really, yeah, oh yeah, he, he is responsive and quick, and he gets his job done, he's committed. We have just adopted this new program with the bulk waste. You, you're used to having it picked up whenever it was your day. And so we've had some growing pains with this because people are expecting it to pick up. So it's an education process. So tell your neighbors, if you see a neighbor that has something out, and it's sitting there, just nudge them rather than doing it for them so that people can get in the habit of calling it in. Um, because once you're used to a certain service, it takes a while for us to change. Um, Gary Ann Lewis, I would really like those cards. I get some. I get them. I'd like to get those out to them. Sure, they sure. Um, give me until about Thursday. Okay. I get them to you. That sounds you good. You ain't heard from me about Thursday's call. Okay. All right. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right. All right. Merry Christmas. Okay. Yeah. I did. All right. Excellent. Um, so with that said, we are now going to move into old business. Things that we brought up in our last meeting um, that we feel like we didn't get closure on or we want to expand upon or whatnot. Uh, I'll kind of start things off a little bit as a report. Uh, we talked about speeding in the neighborhood, was brought to my attention. Um, so uh, David helped me greatly. Um, he put in a request for us, which I followed up on today in a phone call um, with Lisa Parrish, um, that we will be hopefully roughly in the next month. Two of the speed signs are inoperable right now. So there's a back <coughs> backlog of these um, electronic, you know, flasher, you're going too fast in the neighborhood thing. Um, but uh, Lisa Parrish did promise me that we are in the queue. And I emphasized to her, my preference was that coming off of Gulf Beach Highway, making a left or a right onto Sunset to come into Navy Point, in my opinion, you guys tell me if I'm right or wrong, but I think Gulf Beach Highway is a interstate now, people doing 60, 65, 85, and they pull off that into Sunset and they're still doing well over 60 down Sunset into Navy Point. Now there's two speed bumps, but they're bunny hopping those things and going right down Gibbs towards um, past Triangle Park. So I told Lisa, I think that would be the most productive place to put uh, the warning signs. She um, told me today that she has put a car out there the past week, a patrol car, and she said they did not catch anybody over five, hour, five miles an hour over the speed limit. 
they were out there for well over an hour um, and they didn't catch anybody. Now, the police car was visible. Obviously, we all, I'm a driver. I see the police car, I slow down. And I know I speed. I'm a Southern California guy. Uh, I'm slowing down a lot now that I'm in my 50s. But um, I just want you all to know we are addressing it. We're going to do the best we can. We know what happens. The police car goes the other direction, and we all speed up to 80 miles an hour again. When that sign goes away, we're all going to speed up to 80 miles an hour again, right? But let's hope, and I'm going to get to you, Ted. Let's hope that I'm just trying to address what we brought up in the last meeting. Ted. Yeah, no, I'm just, I mean, I'm not saying that West Sunset off of, the Sunset off of Pell Beach is no problem, but coming off the bridge and going to the bridge, that stretch there. From Navy Boulevard. From Navy Boulevard. And they top the bridge because there are no speed bumps from the down, you know, the Navy Boulevard side of the bridge peak to the next one when you're past the circle. And they fly. And it's, I mean, it's 60, 70 miles an hour constantly. And they use, you know, talk to them, they, they use the last ramp on you know, the last speed bump, funny how it's felt, as sort of their launch. So should I, does this group think, should I call, give Lisa a call tomorrow and get I, her? I, I think so. I, based I, on his statement at the meeting, it's already been reported and we're going to get him. Okay, that's great. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying no, I'm saying no, I, I, people speed everywhere. One, one thing these, these speed drivers do to help us is, yeah, it's just a sign. It has the posted speed limit on it and it has a sign that shows them how fast they're actually going. But it also collects data that we need, so we will know the times when the speeding problem is the worst, so that we can concentrate on that time. So it gathers data. When we bring it back in, they download the data, and we're able to look at that and know when, when, where we have to put people. So you're talking about the bridge on Sunset, correct? Yes. And are, are, would you say the speeding is more egregious in a in a westbound direction or an eastbound? It'd be coming into Navy Point, right? So it'd be westbound, correct? Off of I, I, I think it's probably about equal. Okay, thank you. The speed limit sign is going to get it both ways. When we run radar, we, we can do both ways. Yeah. So uh, that's, I think it's coming from the west as well. I'm thinking leaving Navy Point in the AM to hurry and get to work, and coming home to Navy Point, hurry to get home and see the football game. So depending on what time they're going to put it out there, so once they put the speed trailer out, it'll stay out there for several days. Okay. Because we want to gather enough data. It'll be out there probably a couple of weeks at least. That's we gather enough data that we can operate with. And then we follow it up with radar enforcement. Yeah, once we get the data, then we'll know when and where to concentrate our efforts at. Thank you so much. Sure. It's the pass through, too. I mean, yes. it, just as much as it's people from the neighborhood speeding on the way in and out, it's the people that are coming through because they don't want to deal with the nightmare of our roads. So when they're coming, you know, from Gulf Beach Highway in the morning, they're cutting through Navy Point to get over to, the, to, to Navy Boulevard and get to the front gate. Same thing going home. So it might not be a bad idea if people who can in the sheriff's department or whoever else has the ability to liaison with the base to once in a while people go over to the base and they ask them please tell your employees not to be speeding through navy point we're going to be putting up speed signs etc because that's a lot of it jerry that's not to say nobody in the neighborhood speeds but particularly at the times of day when people are trying to you know come and go from that front gate that's that can get pretty rough okay to know. All right, speeding was just one thing of old business. Uh, I just brought that up. Other things about old business from the last meeting or previous meetings. Mm. Tina and I today looked over the notes um, that she sent out and there wasn't anything definitive that we were like, oh, we better bring this up. We were like, well, let's see what the group says. So um, we can't, if the group, Group would like, uh, we can move on to new business uh, with the meeting. Uh, I did not pick out any items of new business. I was thinking um, Gary was going to be kind of with us with a lot of questions, so I was kind of preparing for it to run to 6:45 or so. 
But um, we now have uh, any new business items to discuss. Um, I, I will, again, kind of just open the conversation and try and be brief, but uh, I monitor next door. Um, and just because I just try and stay in tune with what's happening, and I know my neighbor um, had a dolly stolen out of his um, trailer that was parked on his private property, not behind a fence, but it was out of view. It was tucked, his trailer had walls and he had a nice dolly, probably a $50 dolly or $75 dolly. Um, and it was out of view, so somebody came by, went on his property, looked in, ooh, this looks good, took it. Probably at nighttime, between midnight and 6 a.m. And off he goes. So he report, he posted it, not re I don't know if he reported it, um, but he posted on next door as a warning. Hey, guys, I just had my dolly stolen, you know, today. So uh, I'm mindful of my property and where I'm an avid biker and I don't leave my bike visible. I leave it, I keep it locked up. Um, and as David has taught me, I never leave my car unlocked uh, at my residence. Um, so I know it's an inconvenience. You got to unlock it. And I still have the old key, but... Um, you just gotta be mindful. This is this is what's happening now. So um, if you guys get something stolen, I'll get to you, Bill. If you get something stolen, please make a report so they know. If if you don't report it, you're doing a disservice to your community. Yes, we are an a, a intelligence based agency, so we're basing where we allocate manpower on where we know we're having problems. If you don't report a crime, we don't know that it happened. So you're missing an opportunity to get more officers patrolling to your neighborhood by reporting it. Does it matter if it's a flower pot, <coughs> if it's an old bicycle that you don't ride anymore? We need to know about it. And it doesn't matter if there's clearly no hope that we're gonna figure out who did it. The report itself is gonna get more personnel, police personnel in your neighborhood. Um, Phil, question. I was gonna, David, excuse me. Good at reminding people. Most people have a uh, a fob or uh, something that they can arm their car. The nine o'clock, go out at nine o'clock at night and make beep your car to make sure it's locked. Yeah, we do. Uh, we're doing the nine p.m. routine, so they'll be you'll see billboards out reminding people to lock your car doors and keep things yours. Every agency is nationwide is doing some something related to that. So we pick, we pick 9 o'clock, because that's usually the time most people go to bed, or thinking about getting ready to go to bed. Just the last minute check of your, of your property before you go to bed. It's, it's not to be confused with the idea that you can leave things unlocked all the rest of the time. You know, we, we like to uh, suggest that if you've got a lock, use it on any kind of door, anywhere, use it. And the only time it's unlocked is when an authorized user's going through the door. And Close it and lock it again. So important. And I just, again, just want to emphasize reporting it. I think as Tina and I reviewed our notes, one, one of the comments was indifference. And it's, I get it. I'm to a degree, I'm this way. I don't like to cause problems. I don't like to call them. But it's a mindset we need to change of just like Howard said, if something is stolen and we don't report it, we're doing a disservice to the community, to our neighborhood. It's not just me and I oh, was an old dolly. I don't care. I don't need it anymore. I got a second. I got a brand new one anyway. No. That guy who took that dolly, he's going to steal something else and something else and something else and something else. And he's going to keep crawling up the ladder to carjacking or home evasion or something more serious. So if we could just break this mold of calling them more frequently, I think it's gonna make our whole community much better. And it's okay. not only when you have something stolen or when a crime occurs, but you know, if you see something suspicious and you know, the hair is going up on the back of your neck and your gut feeling tells you something is wrong, that's the time to call us. Let us come out and actually figure out you know, if something's happening. Let's say you're wrong five out of six times. Say you're just paranoid or jumping the gun. Or, we would still rather come out all six times and maybe we'll contact somebody three or four of those six times and 
we'll find out, hey, it's just a legit citizen out, you know, doing their thing, and it'll be a friendly interaction. But that one time out of six, you know, that you don't call because you didn't call the other five times either, that's when the crime occurs, they're gone, we come and take the report. We would actually rather catch them in, in, in progress, you know, of the crime. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so other new business items. I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to talk. Uh, anything to say, anything you want to address as a new business item. Um, we got 15 minutes left in the meeting if we stay the whole time, which we do not have to. Um, yes? The about homeless. Homeless. The homeless. So yes. I, I'm up early running, and a couple of times I've it's been kind of eerie, you know, running and it's kind of darkish and yeah, it's kind of it's kind of strange. Some of the people I've seen come out of the woods. Sure. So this is a discussion point that can be endless, right? We're all aware of it. Uh, my advice, my point. I've learned a lot from these gentlemen about the term situational awareness. And David just said something now that I've lived by a lot. You feel a little weird about it. You don't need justification. You don't need to feel like you're rude or you feel uncomfortable about being around someone, male or female. It's your right. It's a free country. So you're early. I, I talked to you uh, before out on the walking trail, and you expressed this to me. Um, my advice is, this is what I say, I, so I, I use this a lot, Tina knows it, and I walk around and I videotape in public places, and I just do that for myself and for them, and I know people don't like being videotaped, but I videotape homeless people in public places, and they don't like it. Well, too bad, then go get a home. Is my, I don't say that to them, but that's what I think in my head. To be homeless, you need to be uncomfortable to be homeless. And now, I get it, there are people that are on hard times, but there is a lot of help for them. And I will help, I will help through my church. But if they don't want the help, I have a right to this sidewalk too, and I have a right to videotape. Okay, so. Here, here's part of the problem with homelessness. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled on a case that applies nationwide now that a homeless person can be on public property and he can have a tent there. He can't be on private property, but he can be on public property. So that would be property the county owns, the state owns, and the feds own. And he can be on property all day long unless the property owner right. wants them on. But they can set up a tent, they can have something to sleep on, and there's really not a whole lot we can do about it right now. So you can call, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. You can call about someone, you know, that's suspicious or, you know, worrying you or whatever, but you're going to have to articulate something to the dispatcher more than they're just homeless or that they appear homeless. That's, We're yeah. actually hoping that the Supreme Court will take this up and overturn that decision because that, that decision was in, was in here. So that, that's the problem. You know, I'm, I'm running and it's, you know, 5.30 <coughs> in the morning and this person's just staring at me. I'm out there alone. You know, I guess I shouldn't be running. you got to remember that any laws that are in effect, if once a court has made a ruling on it that it's unconstitutional, we can't enforce it. So I, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals says so people have a right stuck. to be homeless and be on, on public property. So we're just kind of stuck though. Right now until that changes. If the Supreme Court doesn't take the case up, then we're stuck with that, that Ninth Circuit Court. And that was a case that happened up in Washington State. They arrested a person for being on the public property. The American Civil Liberties Union and the, and the Coalition for the Homeless took it to court and got the, a, a judge to rule in favor of the homeless person. They appealed the decision to, to the Ninth Circuit and the Ninth Circuit Federal Court upheld it. I don't know if you can change your routine. I have a dog now. He doesn't like people coming at me that aren't friendly to me. I don't know if he 
I don't know. Don't select through this. Song. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I don't I, know. I know that you county, have a cell phone with a video camera. Yeah, it's, I don't okay. carry. A cell yeah, I know phone the county is trying to work. I guess I should. I don't. I know the county is trying to work up an idea of where the homeless can go to provide places, but here, once again, is another problem. There is a percentage of the homeless people that do not want to go to any shelter because any shelter you go to is going to have rules. Right. They can't be drunk. They can't be high. There's going to be a limited amount of time they can stay there because those kind of shelters are not made for permanent residency. They're made as a stepping stone to you getting your own place to live. Okay. Um, yeah. Hey, thanks, Joey. And yes. You and I have talked about this offline, and I've talked about this a lot with William Van Horn, and I'm not going to, you know, I think many people in this room know that I've been a homeless advocate at the county for years. That doesn't mean, as um, Officer Anderson well knows, that I am an advocate to let homeless people break laws. No, what they're trying to do is protect their rights. No, I'm not saying that. No, no, I'm talking about, like, for instance, the day when I told you that there was that disturbance yes. across the street. Um, when Deborah Dunlap's bike got stolen over in, in Bayou um, uh, Chico, yeah. I mean, I knew the homeless person who did it. And I contacted the homeless advocates and I said, I'm sorry, but I, you know, so I contact, I said, you need to know that I'm contacting, you know, uh, Deborah and she's probably gonna call the police. So you guys need to get a plan for what you're gonna do. You're gonna leave them there. If you're gonna bail on what you're gonna do. Um, but I'm not gonna bring my opinions to debate people about the homeless issue in this venue. The one thing, that I will repeatedly controvert, repeatedly, is the idea that there's help for these people. The ones that want it, there isn't any. So whereas there is a percentage of people that, no, we don't have a low barrier shelter. So, I mean, the sad thing is, Officer Anderson, we've got people, I don't get the call so much anymore because I kind of gave up because there's nowhere to send them. Uh, people that literally are in distress and saying, I want to go into substance abuse. I don't want to live like this anymore. Please take me somewhere. Where can I go? Nowhere. You know, we don't have that. Yeah, it, it's it. It's we don't it. have it. And so there aren't beds, there aren't social workers, there aren't mental health resources, there ain't no money. And so the percentage of people that don't want to go, you can't help them, and probably they're in places going to be jail. The higher percentage of people, there's no, there's nowhere to go right. anywhere. And, I, and I'm not saying anything bad about the counselors, and not even about the American Civil Liberties Union, because they're doing what they think's right. The problem is it, it took some of the teeth out of what we can do. No. You can't let people uh, camp on the sidewalk, so. I mean, I know that that's the law. Actually, I'm, I'm not actually, well, but what I'm saying is I'm not an extremist. I'm not a radical. All that does is breed place for disease, crime. It's, it's a horrible model. And if Seattle and Portland and California and LA did nothing else, it showed some of our homeless advocates who have a pie in the sky idea that that's the way that you can do these things. It, it, it doesn't work. Right. But we don't, neither do we have anything else that it, it, it works or not. We don't have anything. Well, I'm going to, well, I'm going to get to you next. As a, your hand went up, right? No, no, I was just saying hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing, um, I, I think the Bright Bridge um, program is good up in Brownsville. Um, it's a start. I haven't done a full, deep research of it. It's a church organization, but they do not endorse. you got to get on your hands and knees and say, Jesus Christ is your Savior. It's not what they're all about. Uh, they are a church. Um, and I think you have to be clean to go there. Uh, they will not let you bring in alcohol. It's men only, also. Uh, they won't let you bring alcohol or drugs in, um, which I'm an advocate for. Um, but that's a start. I know it doesn't solve the problem, but that's what I advocate. When I see some men that I've seen on a routine basis, and they, hey man, you got a dollar, you got a dollar? No, I don't have a dollar, you want some water? I give them water, granola bar, so forth. If I develop a trust and a dialogue with them and say, do you really, do you want to get off the street? Yeah, man, this sucks, it's hot out here. Then I give them the Bright Ridge family. And I said, I will drive you there. 
I will even sit with you for a good 30 minutes and help you fill out the intake form. Um, you know, that's, like, I'm going to confess this. <laughs> I was homeless for three months. It was 25 years ago. I was evicted. I still have 10 grand in my account, but I was living in my truck down in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, I wasn't a problem. I had enough gas and I moved it around, but it's tough. It was tough. I mean, it was tough showering. It was tough to figure out how to get my resume together and get myself. I was, I was not, I didn't have a drug addiction, but I was just on hard times. And that, a lot of these people, addiction is big. Mental illness is big. Um, and so more thorough help is needed. And you're right. Those programs are not here in Pensacola. So it's a huge problem, but we're not going to solve it tonight. So that's the track I'm taking. I've referred three guys. One guy took my offer. The other two said, nah, or they took the file. They said, well, I'll take the granola bar, and they walked off. One guy did. Now, I don't think he stayed the program. He wanted to keep drinking and doing that. But I'm trying. So, uh, yes, ma'am. I would just say quickly, I mean, this is obviously incredibly complicated. I'd rather not be filmed, but that's OK. I'd rather not be filmed. Well, it is a public. Okay. Yeah. Um, it is a public. Obviously, just take it off if she doesn't. Obviously, it. that's yeah. an incredibly complicated topic, and like, there's no good answer. But in the neighborhood, maybe if you let the group know if there's a specific area that it's like getting very common that you're seeing that, then maybe we can all kind of help, you know, make sure that that area is is looked at and supervised, and there could be kind of a presence there, so it's not as friendly. I'm also curious about the Ninth Circuit thing, since so yeah. we're in the Eleventh Circuit and they're not Yeah, binding. well, but but we can. But the um, federal judges are looking at that as being a precedent that was set. We're being sued right now right. for enforcing the county ordinance yeah. that was later declared unconstitutional. I know there's a lot going on. They're suing the sheriff's office for it right we're now. We're not going to solve it today, and it's and it's complicated, and it's a human issue, and it's also a safety issue if it gets you know out of control. So, so if you just let the group know if. I was thinking in a certain area, maybe we can help make that area, you know, maybe we can walk there and make it safer. Gavin Newsom is the one that's calling for the Supreme Court. Gavin Newsom, of, of all people. So when he's calling for it, I think we can give us the idea help. that people can just pitch tents on sidewalks and it's going to work. Yeah. It doesn't work. It's so, yeah, they're finding out that that's yeah. not a solution to the problem. It's, it's a nationwide there's, there's, a, there's a lot of facets to this problem. Because not only is it finding a place they can live, but it's getting the mental health counseling they need, the drug addiction counseling they need, monetary, maybe they need some kind of help with that to get them started, uh, making them realize that they probably need to try to find a job if they have the ability to work. There's a lot of things here, and it's hard to convince people that are sometimes that are living on the street. If they're happy with being drunk and happy with being high, I was married to an alcoholic for 10 years. There was nothing I could do to change her mind. When I told her, I'll go, hey, I'll go sit at AA with you. I'm, I'm, I'm not a drinker, but I'll go sit with you. She said she didn't have a drinking problem. I had a problem because I didn't drink. So it finally about, reached the boiling point. We're about up on time. Um, so we're going to kind of bring things to a close. A couple quick quick notes I just want to put out there of helpful advice. Um, um, I said this in the last meeting. I just think it's so helpful. Uh, work working as an Amazon delivery guy. If your Christmas season, when you guys get packages, if you can tell your delivery guy to place it somewhere on your property that's not in sight from the road, it's gonna save your packages from the porch pirates. Porch pirates are a serious problem. So just create a space. You don't want anyone to see this, put it there. Where when you walk up to the road, oh yeah, here's my package. But they can't see it from the street. It's like saves 95% of your packages. They don't want to get out of the car and go steal your package unless they see it. There are people that follow the delivery trucks around. Yeah. And once the truck makes the delivery, they go up and grab the package. We have it on video. You can uh, see the car pull up and then run up to the porch, grab the, grab the package and go. The other thing, and I think this does apply to Neighborhood Watch. If you don't have a copy of your U.S. Constitution, I suggest you get one and carry it with you. This is your rights. 
If you don't have it memorized, then have a copy. If you want a copy of it, I'll get it for you. Okay? But these are super important. Super important, in my opinion. Okay, uh, one more thing, and then we're going to uh, adjourn. Um, uh, Tina and I have noticed in our walks, down by the playground, there is an older, it's uh, kind of defunct now, but there is a uh, bull, uh, billboard, billboard. billboard um, that could have been, we could be posting notices on this billboard. Um, but I think Sally probably knocked it, didn't knock it down, but it blew the glass out of it. So it's kind of warped and not in good shape. If anybody's interested in helping me try and resurrect that thing, um, I don't think it's going to take that much work. I'd like to try and get it back usable, and then, uh, Bill, maybe we can um, put a glass in it or plexiglass and get a key like we're doing for the sign out front, and then we can start posting things on there, that billboard, as people are doing their walkway. I just want to put that out there. We'll put it in the notes, and we'll kind of bring it up in the next meeting. Um, and then one other thing. I just wanted to uh, comment about the videotaping. Um, this gentleman is videotaping at my request. Okay, these are public meetings. Okay, I encourage it. Um, I understand uh, not wanting to be videotaped. So um, maybe we'll see about maybe just keeping the camera at the front. Um, but your voice will definitely be recorded. Okay, this is a public menu. All right. In addition to that, I would like to live stream these meetings. So if you don't want to come to these meetings, I'd like to increase our participant participation. So if you don't want to come, I'd like to Zoom or Facebook, whatever, and see if people just want to sit in the comfort of their own home and watch this, um, then uh, I would like that. I think that's a good thing. Can I throw uh, in a, just a yes, comment please. here? Yes, please. So whether you want him to videotape or you're all, you all don't want him to videotape or everybody wants to videotape, <clears throat> we can't stop anybody legally from videotaping here. But when it comes to live streaming, um, that's something we'll check with legal, but that may be something that you want to open up at the next meeting to a motion, second discussion and vote, and see if the membership want to do it. Because okay. usually mm -hmm. we, we try to avoid having the chair make any decisions for the group. Because well pretty, you make three decisions and they'll hate you for the rest of your life. Yeah. If they make the decisions, you can say, "Hey, well, they are the ones that decided it." I'm just trying to help. I don't yes. think there's going to be a prohibition in doing it here. I don't think so either. Uh, it's 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 to be a public place. I did. I did request them to take the Yeah, I don't think that's going to be a problem. But it should be something that if you're. Yes suggesting that you're proactively want to do it and recommend it, you might want to have them just discuss it. So at least the person who's videoing can find out whether the group wants it or not. And maybe take their decision on that. I move that we adjourn. Second the motion to adjourn. Anyone can please? All right, I guess we're, thank you, thank you. All right, we're adjourning. Next meeting is on Monday, January 8th. Thank you all for coming. Thanks for coming. Thank you for video. Oh, I yeah, right. uh, yeah, I don't. I really don't think there's any kind of I don't think I'm going to find out. Right now, just if you're proactively, you might want to get the group to proactively. And then people can come. Uh, 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 but at least we're I did not want to be a That was, don't worry. That was my first day here. But what you look at is a big file. I think